Hey guys, this lesson will be uh, on finding the electric field of a rod, a loop, and a disc. So let's get started. So first of all, let's start with a rod. So um, the formula for finding, well let me start by saying, uh, we'll be trying to find the electric field uh, right here. I guess I'll just label as A. It is 0.5 meters away, the rod is 4 meters long, and it has a charge of 1 nanocoulombs. So, uh, for the majority of uh, rod-like problems, they'll all be finding it at a point um, where it's in the middle of the, or very close to the middle of the rod. So let's look at uh, an equation. So the rule, or the general uh, equation used for it, uh, this, this isn't, never mind that is electric field equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 q over l over r. And essentially uh, electric field at a point equals the constant weave even using the 9 e to the 9th or negative 9th um, I mean just 9th uh, times 2 uh, times Q, which is the charge of the rod, uniform if it's uniformly charged, over the length uh, of the rod, and um, times I mean over R, which is the distance from the rod to the point. And uh, this is the formula used for a uh, very long rod compared to uh, the distance here. And generally, for most uh, questions like this, the that will be um, something that can be uh, taken as an assumption. So um, let's just do this real quick. So we know uh, this equals 9 e to the 9th. I won't use units here. We know times 2, because that's just 2, times q. And since this is nanocoulombs, we've got to convert it to coulombs. So 1 e to the negative 9th for coulombs. And this will be over L. Uh, the length is 4 meters over R. And R is the distance here, which is 0.5 meters. So 0.5 meters. And once you do that all out, it'll just end up equaling 9 uh, newtons per coulomb. And uh, that's how you will find the electric field um, of a long rod. And uh, just as an important side note, um, uh, the general way that the uh, electric field on a rod looks, like say this is a rod, and say it's positive, um, it'll be pointing kind of straight out. Actually, yes, it will be pointing straight out at the middle of it. But as you get more towards the end of it, it kind of has a slant. So this is generally what um, electric field of points of the rod look like. So just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, so let's go on to our next one. Two loops. So here we have two loops. Um, they are um, concentric with each other, meaning they're kind of like, you know, in a line. Um, they're a distance 0.4 meters from each other. They both have the same charge, but this is positive. Uh, 9 nanocoulombs is negative 9 nanocoulombs. We're trying to find the electric field at the middle of the two loops, and they have a radius of 0.1 meters. So let's first do this one at a time. Um, let's look at this negative uh, one first. So the formula for a loop is it's kind of long, but it's okay. Electric field equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times. Q, which is charge, times Z, which is distance from the center of the loop to the point where we're measuring the electric field, over radius squared, which is the radius, plus Z again, which is the distance from the middle to that. This is our, uh, oh, well, I guess I'll show you in a second. Z squared, and both of these to the 3 over 2. So um, we're doing, let's do our negative one first. So um, our constant, once again, will be 9e to the 9th times q, which is negative 9 um, 
this will be e to the negative ninth because remember we have infer nanocoulombs to coulombs times z. In this case, z is going to be 0 0.2 because it's halfway in between both of them, and if uh, it's uh, 0.4 between both of them, then we need to take half of this. So 0.2 meters, and all of that over r, which is, I mean, um, in parentheses, 0.1 squared, because that's r, plus z squared, which is 0.2 again, and both of those, so 3 over 2. And once you do all that math, it'll end up equaling 1449 newtons per coulomb. So that's what we'll get to do this negative one. And um, now we're going to have to start thinking about the direction it's pointing. So when you have a negative, a ring uh, like this is, that is negative, it's going to look like this, at least four through it. So say this is our center. The... Um, Arrows of electric field are going to point out, or point in actually, sorry, for negative, are going to point in. So whatever direction you're coming from, they're going to point in. And the the magnitude of these electric field at different points, it's, um, it's uh, kind of complicated. At first it starts off really small, then gets really big really fast, then continually gets small infinitely. Kind of like, um, if you can imagine, if this was like the, the magnitude of the arrows as it goes, it just gets bigger, gets bigger, gets bigger, gets bigger, and then just gradually kind of gets smaller before it hits the thing. But uh, the important thing is that it's always pointing towards it. So we know that since this is going to be pointing towards a negative, and this is one, um, then our electric field so far is going to look like this in this direction. Okay, so now let's find it for the positive. Well, since we know that uh, basically everything is the same except for the charge, the radius is the same, the distance from it is the same, the charge is the same, just different magnitude, that this is also going to be 1, 4, or 9 newtons per coulomb. And uh, the way a positive one works is about the same way except for in the equal and opposite direction, it points out instead of in. So this, if it's going to point out, is also going to point in this direction. So if you have two E fields pointing in this direction, both with magnitude 1449, we just add them together, and we get our answer to be 2800 and, oops, and 90 eight newtons per coulomb. And that's how you figure out the electric field at the middle of two rings. Okay, so now let's do our last